There's nothing quite like the excitement that comes with unwrapping a new Christmas present under the tree each year. Or perhaps finally getting that new bow you've been saving up for. Unless, of course, you get a chance to watch a buck unwrap the crimson shreds of once living velvet skin from his soon to be polished rack. This is where it all begins. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. Antlers, they're a pretty amazing piece of bone. Why? Well, they're the fastest growing bone known to mankind. This whitetail antler in velvet in the summertime will grow up to a half inch or more a day. And an elk antler like those behind me, when they're in velvet, they'll grow up to a full inch a day. That's pretty amazing. Those antlers are is some of the fastest growing tissue there is, and it's covered by what we refer to as velvet. It's a living tissue that is very sensitive and pumping all sorts of blood and nutrients to that rack. You know, whitetail antlers have fascinated man for centuries, and it's just because of their beauty and majesty. But it's only been recent that we've learned about the biology of antlers and how bucks grow them and shed them every year. It's fascinating stuff when you think about it. You know, it starts in March in most places with antler growth. And the buck is gonna grow his antlers throughout the summer. By July, he could be adding an inch or more a day to his rack, especially on a mature deer. When it comes to late summer, a lot of fascinating changes are occurring in the whitetail world. And when you think about it, summer, that's a time of leisure for the whitetails. The only thing they have to worry about at all are natural predators. And frankly, there's so much food available for natural predators that they're not even pushing deer hard. The life of a whitetail during, during late summer is about as easy as it gets. There's food, unless you're dealing with a very arid region, there's food all over heck. There's water. They got to put up with some bugs, but that's a nice trade for not having to have idiots like me chase them around the woods. A tendency is the bucks bachelor group up over summers. Okay, um, They're looking for a specific type of habitat at this time. What they're really looking for is a bunch of food, stay the heck out of the fawn rearing areas because mom is going to chase me out if I don't, and, uh, and just comfort. They don't, they tend to, during summer, tend not to like the real thick and nasty stuff. Why? Because of what they got growing on their heads. But when August comes, his body changes, his biology changes. The testosterone in his body is going to tell his antlers that it's time to stop growing. And when they stop growing, they start to calcify and become the bone that we love to chase in autumn. And that's about the time where you see a dramatic shift, a dramatic change in behavior. All of a sudden, those buddy groups that were getting along so well, now they're, not, now they're knocking heads. Okay, now they're starting to see that, geez, the rut's coming, my testosterone level's just starting to get up there a little bit. Hmm, I need to pay attention to what area that I'm gonna dominate this year. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, try it, and go hunt. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ arrows and by 10 Point Crossbow Technologies. There is no substitute. So some of the telltale signs that a buck is about to peel his velvet is when you look at him, his antlers don't look spongy anymore. You know, in summer, in June and July, they look spongy, they look almost hairy, which is what it is. That velvet 
are small little silica hairs. And those are sensitive. And a buck is going to, that's basically how he's going to feel his way through the woods because he doesn't want to damage his rack. And if he gets that touched by a twig or a branch or another deer, it's going to be painful. So those, it's going to start looking more dried appearance, more gray. And you're going to even see cracks in it if you're lucky enough to see a buck up close. There's going to be cracks in that velvet. And like I said, about August 10th, August 15th, in most parts of the country, you're going to see that graying appearance of the velvet. It's going to signal to you that the buck is about ready to peel. Life is pretty peaceful up until about the time velvet shed occurs. Now, it's not the velvet shed itself. It's more a timing. What ends up happening is as the daylight hours start getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the pineal gland sends signals to the body that, you know what, it's time for your rack to stop growing. It's time for you to start taking the upcoming rut seriously. So at that point, their velvet dies, they end up shedding it. Once the velvet sheds, your light sparring starts. The bachelor groups break up. They go off to their own little separate corners of the world. And frankly, hunting them gets to be more challenging. If you're lucky enough to live in an area that allows late summer, very, very early fall hunting that overlaps with when the bucks are still in velvet, there's really no time where bucks are more patternable. They're bedding here, they're feeding there, they're going between the two. That's about it. You're not going to get lucky. You're not going to get lucky that time of year because you need to figure out where those deer are feeding or where they're bedding or both in order to consistently get into them. Now it's pretty easy to come by a hard horned white tailed deer. Most of the seasons overlap when the deer have shed their velvet and their hard horn, especially during the rut when most of us are chasing white tails. But have you ever wanted to hunt a deer when it's in velvet? Well, you gotta do a little planning then. And that planning all centers around timing and a state to get the job done. The timing part is very critical because most hunting seasons occur after a deer strips its velvet. When is that time period? Well, a deer usually begins stripping their velvet in September and it's completely done by mid-September. So you have to look for states that allow hunting in August and early September. My home state right here of Wyoming is a good place to look. September 1st, they open. Next door in Montana, it's similar. Early September, the season opens. North Dakota nearby, they even open a little bit earlier in August. And states like Colorado, Utah, Nevada, Florida, Kentucky, South Carolina, they all have velvet seasons. And there's others out there. Just do a little bit of research, a little bit of planning, and get the right license. Some of those states, it's gonna be archery only, but a few you might be able to take your firearm out. Regardless, if you wanna get one of those velvet trophies, plan now, plan early, and get the right license to go after some of that soft, fuzzy stuff. Velvet peel is a fascinating thing to watch. Velvet peel is one of the most interesting things that you'll ever witness if you get the chance to witness that. I had this opportunity here in Wyoming this week, and let me tell you, it was a thing of beauty. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Matthews. In Wyoming, whitetail bow hunting season often opens a week to 10 days before many of the bucks have peeled their velvet, which means preserving the rack as a trophy is much more obtainable. Deer and Deer Hunting's Dan Schmidt is at Trophy Ridge Outfitters trying to do just that. For me, this has become almost an annual tradition. Northeast Wyoming, this is the fourth time I've been out here and there's a reason why I keep coming back. It is so incredible. As a deer hunter, you will not experience anything like this anywhere else in North America. Yes, there's South Dakota, there's Colorado, there's Montana, some awesome deer hunting states, but Wyoming, Northeast Wyoming particularly, Ralph Dampman has a place here that is unbelievable. Whitetails, mule deer, antelope, elk, mountain lions, turkeys, it's a menagerie of wildlife, but the whitetails are what bring us back here year after year because it's one of those early season bow hunts. There's not too many of them. September 1st, it's set your clock by it. September 1st every year, 
Northeast Wyoming is the place to be. Hey everybody, day one of deer camp. We had a little bit of action this morning, but it was pretty slow on the whitetails. So late morning, I have an antelope doe tag in my pocket. Look what happened. And we're sitting out here, we're sitting middle of the day, late morning, middle of the day. There's antelope everywhere. Got her, got her, got her. Got her. Over on Stanner. She's her. down right there. Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh, what an adrenaline rush. Holy cow. So it didn't work out this morning with white tails. And Ralph says, let's go put you in your, uh, your antelope doe blind. I bought an antelope doe because I had antelope meat last time I was here and I really loved it. And I just put a really big doe down. This is my first antelope ever. Day two, just as excited as day one. A little bit more tired, but just as excited. We we're going to a new blind this day, and it was another good looking spot. So it's still dark out, and I hear that telltale sign. There's something rubbing the brush. I think it's a buck rubbing his antlers, just making a rub. I've heard it before, I've heard it a lot of times. A Little more light, bam. There's a buck standing 80 yards from us rubbing his antlers. He's shedding his velvet. It's hard to see through the dark, you know, looking through the binoculars. Can kind of, I know it's a buck. I know what he's doing, but I'm not sure how big he is. He's not going anywhere. That's one thing that I've learned about deer behavior. When those bucks shed their velvet, it's a long process. It's usually a day, it's sometimes three days, and it's enormously stressful for the whitetail. Their body's undergoing changes, and that's what's going on right there. 80 yards from our blind. We're sitting on the ground right there. A buck is shedding his velvet. Guess what? It's getting light out and here he comes. He's, he's shaking his head. He's rubbing his antlers in the brush. He's hitting grass. He's hitting some little trees. He's trying to get that velvet off. Velvet's coming off. He's eating it. This is stuff we've printed in the magazine over the years. The biology of the whitetail. A buck is no different than a doe that gives birth. That buck, when he sheds his velvet, he's going to eat that velvet probably to eliminate the scent, but also to obtain those trace nutrients that are in the velvet. It's bizarre, but that's nature. That's how it works. He's getting closer and closer. What a show. For 30 minutes, the blood's running in his eyes. He's just trying to get it off. It's a scene that I cannot believe we got to experience. And he's putting on quite a show. And that show wound up 18 steps from the blind. Man. Got him. Stay on him. I've experienced a lot of things in the deer woods. <laughs> that was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. There. We've got our buck. We have our buck. What a beautiful morning. Just a God-blessed morning. Yes. What a pretty deer. Look at that. What a pretty, pretty buck. Look at the character on that deer. Oh my gosh. Is he beautiful? Holy cow. Wow. I'm speechless. Awesome buck, awesome experience. And for me, that's what it's about. Inches of antlers, I don't care. I honestly don't care about how big that buck is. To me, it's about the experience. It's about being out there, experiencing that deer one-on-one. -on -one. You get to see the whole thing. Let's face it, how many times when you're out there, a deer comes in, bam, he's right there and you shoot him. It's cool, it's, it's fun, you enjoy it, but you don't remember it as much. You don't remember it as much as that 30 minutes of watching this deer come in, that's what we had. 
Shot goes off. I know the arrow hit its mark. He mule kicks. I knew he was going to be down really fast. And the celebration began. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Analogix. Protect your herd with the power of science. Thompson Center, America's master gunmakers. Sever Broadheads, straight through. Hunter Safety System, stay connected. And by Cuddyback, more deer, fewer blanks. So here's a little tip that is very simple, but it really works nice. I just get myself some of this. It's a synthetic lube, aero lube. I don't know why I haven't been using this over all the years because it really helps getting arrows out of targets, especially 3D targets, and you're shooting fast, high-powered bows. It's got this little soft applicator on there. You just gotta put a little bit on your arrow, on the front and the back of the arrow. You can, you can do that if you want. It's, it's real slippery. But I just put these on all my arrows. What I'm going to do is show you the difference between a treated arrow and a non-treated arrow. Now this arrow here, different colored Deep Six FMG. I'm just going to leave that one in here and show you the difference it makes when pulling those arrows out of the target. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull out the arrows that I know I put the lube on and show you the difference. Now, normally what I do in pulling targets out is I've invested in one of these things. It's a, it's a godsend. I'm gonna show you that I don't need it here. That's, is it, that, I mean, that was almost in three quarters of the way. That had a practice broadhead on it. Simple as that. Now this one, I know I'm not going to be able to budge, but I'll try just for, <laughs> no, I can't pull that out. <clears throat> Don't want to bend my arrow. <sighs> That's the difference that a little arrow lube can make. Try some. You know, when I'm bow hunting, I never know when I'm gonna get a shot. I'm sure you're the same way. A lot of times we think about this in our heads and it's gonna be the perfect shot. Sitting in our tree stand, sitting in our ground blind, the deer shows up there, it's either nicely quartering away or perfectly broadside. Doesn't always happen that way. For me, what I've found over the years is a lot of times, I get a shot opportunity on my way to the stand. It's happened a lot, especially when I'm doe hunting. And I wanna be prepared for that. I practice with my bow all the time, especially on 3D routes, where I'll be walking and I'll pretend, ooh, there's a deer and I come to full draw. And it's, it's a pretty simple process, you know, just knock an arrow and shoot with a crossbow. A lot more going on there. You can't really snap shoot with a crossbow. I can't, not accurately. If I just have to throw that crossbow up, this is not anywhere near a gun. I need a really solid rest. And when I'm doing a spot and stalk situation, for me, it's gonna be some kind of monopod, tripod, something that I'm either carrying on the crossbow, like a Steady Eddy, or something that I'm just carrying with me, just like this bipod here. So I'm gonna practice some of those shots so I'm prepared if I get a shot like this when hunting season comes. right on the money. You know, that felt good because I was really steady with this bipod. But most times I'm not gonna have the luxury of getting down on one knee and taking my time. I'm gonna have to shoot off the hip standing up. That's why I have a steady eddy on all of my crossbows. This is real world practice. Sometimes you just don't have that luxury to get down on a knee. You know, let's pretend we're walking. We come along the trail. Oh, there's a deer right there. 
Like I said, I could do this a lot faster with my compound bow. Crossbow is a little bit more thinking. Put the Steady Eddie attached to the crossbow. Take a couple steps out. I'm just pretending that deer doesn't see me. And I get, it's a monopod, I get it right in my hip. That's a three point position right there that makes it really steady. It's right, up, right on the money. You know, having a monopod, a steady eddy, makes all the difference when you're crossbow hunting on your way to your hunting spot. Okay, so that's how I practice with my crossbow. Now let me show you how I do it with my Matthews. You know, if I'm walking up to my hunting spot, and like I said, this is real world practice here. I'm pretending that I'm walking to my hunting spot. I'm walking to my hunting spot. Normally what I'm gonna do, and this is perfectly fine, is I'm gonna have an arrow knocked and ready to go. Locked and loaded. Now I'm walking slowly. I'm practicing that I'm hunting. I'm creeping around the corner. Slowly, slow. Ooh, there's a buck right there. This is gonna be one motion. I'm gonna to come to full draw before I get to the opening. Be ready. Sneak into the opening. There he is, settle in. Bam, we got him. That's the thing about compound bow hunting. Compound bow hunting is what you practice. With a crossbow, it's all about being stable and steady when you take the shot.